Welcome back to our Shaken series. Over the summer, we have been looking at the resource called Shaken, created by the amazing Big House. This is a game which helps you to explore and make good and healthy choices to live well when life shakes, as well as helping you to grasp the biblical hope of God's constant presence with you, no matter what. We have looked at how the things that we do to try and deal with our feelings are called coping mechanisms. And we know now that there are two types of coping mechanisms. One, healthy, and two, unhealthy. The healthy ones help us to land well when we are shaken. And the unhealthy ones, they don't. In fact, they can help us make feel worse and make life more difficult. So choosing healthy ways of coping is really important and they will help us to live well no matter what shakes us in life, because there is hope. There are three really important things that will help each one of us to cope and live well in good and bad days. And we know that they are talking, listening and spotting. We have looked at each of these in detail to understand what they really mean and how they can help us. And if you want a refresher, just go back and listen to each of those videos separately. We have also examined a few of the coping mechanisms in much closer detail. And today we're going to check out a few more together. We're going to begin with number 13 in the Shaken resource, which is talking regularly. We thought about how to begin talking in our earlier section. Now we want to think about how to keep talking. Talking regularly to friends or a trusted adult or adults is a really healthy habit to have. If you're in the habit of sharing your thoughts and feelings regularly, it'll be much easier to spot crisis feelings before they hit you fully and you will know that you are understood and not on your own in whatever is happening to you. Having at least one relationship like this is very healthy for everyone. If you can think of a friend or a trusted adult to have this type of relationship with, then make it a habit to see and talk regularly with them. Don't be shy to ask to have time with them. And if you can't think of someone who that could be, then ask God to give you this person and keep asking him until he brings someone along. God has made us to be known and understood in relationships. When we ask for his help in finding safe and healthy relationships, he will help us. So what is the importance of speaking to someone that you trust? Well, it's much easier to be open with someone that you do trust. You know that they will keep your worries private unless they need to be shared as a matter of safety. It might take you a while to find someone who you trust this much and you might feel a little scared or worried to open up at the beginning. So who do you think you might be able to talk to? Do we share different things with different people? And why might that be? Well, we might feel comfortable talking to parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, best friends, teachers, ministers, youth leaders at different times. And that is OK. How you feel in the moment that you might need to talk to might influence who you talk to. Or maybe it's the topic. You might need an adult in some situations or other times it might be that your friends know you best. It's important to remember to choose people who will listen to you and have your best interests. Next, we're going to explore counselling. Part of talking regularly to someone about your feelings and thoughts might include having a counsellor. Counsellors are really good at understanding and helping people to have healthy minds and hearts. They can help us understand our thoughts and feelings when they seem muddled and they can teach us new ways of looking after our minds and hearts. Because counsellors realise how helpful counselling can be in looking after our hearts and minds, they all actually have their own counsellors too. Your school might have its own counsellor. You could ask a teacher about this and how to get an appointment with them if that's something that might interest you. If you would like a counsellor who is Christian and you can talk to about God as well as your own difficult situations, you can contact the listening space, which is the counselling service run by the big house and really important to them. The details are on the next screen for you to pause and read. And there's a link in the description of this video that explains it a bit more. 
Remember that you are precious and loved by God. You are known and you have value and worth and you have the right to be heard. The third coping mechanism is called bless. Sometimes the most surprising but helpful thing that we can do when we feel overwhelmed by our difficult situation is to go and do something kind for someone else. Maybe it's just helping someone with chores at home or making something for someone, writing a thank you note, praying for someone that you know. As we look to love and help others, it can help us remember that there is much more to us and our lives than our hard moments. As we consider how we can bless someone in our lives, we follow the commands of Jesus when he says in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, let me give you a new command, love one another in the same way that I loved you, you love one another. It is how I will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love that you have for each other. I've got a short little exercise for you to try. All you need is a Bible. If you don't have a physical one, you can easily download one onto your phone. I love the Bible app by YouVersion as it's got lots of other things on it too. God has a unique plan and purpose for you, no matter who you are or what is happening in your life right now. You are not defined by the things that shake you. I'd love for you to read the following five passages on the next screen and jot down the key messages that you think the verse is telling you. Then press play again and we'll keep talking. The first verse was from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. And the message is simply that in Jesus, you have been created for a purpose. The second one from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 7, you are loved by God. Psalm 139, 4 says that you are wonderfully made. Hebrews 13, verse 5, you are never alone. God is with you. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, you are valuable to God. John chapter 15, verse 14, you are a friend of Jesus. You are not defined by the things that shake you. When we come to Jesus, there is hope. There is more. There is hope and future. You can be confident in God's love and everlasting presence in your life. Sometimes you need to remind yourself each day about your identity in Christ. Thank you for joining us today and I'm going to close in a word of prayer. After I have finished speaking, please continue in your own thoughts for as long as you would like. God, thank you so much that you are with us no matter what shakes us in life. God, help us to find healthy coping mechanisms that will ground us and help us feel more connected to you and to help us make the right choices when we need to. God, thank you so much that we are not defined by what shakes us, by what we find difficult and hard to go through. But God, we have your love, your hope, your future. And God, thank you for all that and so much more. Amen.